I made a video three years ago about having these tires put on. They're, uh, uh, I don't think they're even 10% worn yet. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're absolute, you know, look, look, fingernail depth of tread on them still. They're, uh, the Max, Maxis tires. Uh, what is it? Uh, Maxis All Terrain Warm, warm Drive. Yeah. Right. Warm Drive. And uh, they've been on uh, three years now. And, uh, you know, there's still, there's still the, the markings. I mean, the, the tread depth indicator is way down in there. And as I say, there's still a finger nail depth of tread on them. That ain't bad for three years. Yeah, okay, we had uh, lockdown, so it didn't get moved much then. And uh, my front ones, my front ones are all terrains, but they're more of a, a road terrain tire. And uh, they're only half worn, and they've been on there for five years. They were on the back to start with. But anyway, I don't know whether you know, right? The MOT is due on 17th of March. Yeah, 17th or 18th of March, the MOT is due. And uh, you can get an MOT anything up to a month before and I have 13 months MOT on it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just uh, checking the brakes and this one is binding so off comes the caliper and uh, you can do it with standard tools right but uh, I mean because I you all should know I used to have a garage um, the tools you know I bought tools over the years and this is an air driven tool if I can get the sun off it. This is an air driven tool, right? And it comes with, if I can open the box, it comes with all different shoes on a 3 8 drive, right? And these go into your calipers because on transits, there, a lot of vehicles on the rears have screw calipers. They come out under hydraulic and then release a tad right but then to be able to close the caliper um, you've got to pump them back and that's where this comes in handy because it's air driven it'll push the piston in it pushes the piston in when you plug it into the air it pushes that forwards let's take that off reflective right uh, there it pushes it'll it'll push when you plug it in the air and press the trigger, it'll push the piston of the caliper back into its holder. On these, there's only one single uh, caliper, uh, piston, I should say. And uh, this is a specialized tool, I think. Oh, bloody hell, I've had it years and years and years. Um, and I think it cost me about 40 or 50 quid then. But it's been well used now goes back in its cellophane and uh, I only fetch it out when I need it obviously but uh, it came with all, all different size ones it, there is a list in there to tell you which size it is which because they are numbered and it tells you which one it is uh, does Volvo um, Datsun Nissan's uh, it, it does everything anyway and uh, even if it is slightly out of line It'll still do it. You can find one in there to fit a caliper, any said caliper. But <laughs> as normal, the Ford one is always in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Ford one's always in there because uh, it is the one that I use the most. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's now the 5th, 20, 25th of February, Saturday 25th. So, um, I'm just about to start on it. I'm not going to go step, go step by step. I mean, everybody knows how to take caliper off. You know, it's just two screws. You can undo these to slip, slip the caliper over to change the pads. That is what, what I will most probably do. 
disconnect the handbrake. The handbrake works on the hydraulic, uh, on the cable. And uh, I'll uh, have to work that one a bit. I'd usually take him off, hold him up in the air to here, and uh, just clamp him there, and then keep trickling WD-40 down him. As though it does lubricate it up. So, right, let's get to right. and take it apart. It connected in there. Oil. This is what you do. You got the little lever on the top. Right, that's the release button. That's the one that puts the pressure on. And when you press it, it pushes air into that piston. And I press it and hold it on. And I, I'm not three handed. And then you turn the uh, arm clockwise and that will screw the caliper in but you've got to keep that pressure on otherwise it just won't push in it, it'll free it up and it'll spin in one place all right so you've got to keep the pressure on as it grips the screws and then it'll draw it in well that's the only way i can explain it so i'll just get on with it 11 30 same day and uh, i've uh, worked them about five or six times worked them in and out in and out in and out the uh, WDs I held him up here clamped him and poured WD down him on the handbrake cable and that's okay um, so he's back on there I've tightened him all down oh I don't know what to do about that so I'm just about to put a wheel back on just cleaned him I've when I washed the van, my brush won't get inside, and I forgot to do it when I washed it. As I use that Auto Glim Magnum, is it? Magna, and uh, that always takes the brake uh, dust off. I've checked the pads; the pads are okay. They're still pretty, pretty new, so I ain't replacing them this time. Um, I might have to do it, you know, the end of the year. Um, right. So, I all I got to do is put that wheel back on the stuff here to do that so I'll carry on then the passenger side now I'm on the driver's side but I don't know whether you can see in there because this had a new kit in it yeah last year this one turns a lot easier right you screw it clockwise to out all right yeah brake calipers yeah, so I don't know whether you can see in there but this this one is turning no problem uh, clockwise is taking it in anti-clockwise on this side is bringing it out because I can't I can no longer pull on it but it's all that's it it's I let the air out a bit now it, I don't know whether you can see but it has screwed out a little bit so I, I know it's uh, I'll put up as much pressure as I can and I'll screw it back in so the other side was anti-clockwise <laughs> This side is clockwise to screw it in. There, that's got him. So that one's, that's how that works. I didn't think it was this side that was binding on. I took it down a road and uh, it uh, was dragging on the other side. Um, so I took uh, the grandson with me and when, when we got out, he says, Gaga, your back wheel's gassing. <laughs> Cause he could see smoke coming out of it. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, that one's unseized now. I used, to clean the wheels, when I wash the vans, the uh, cars and the vans, I use that um, Auto Glim Mag Magna, Magna, Magnia or something, and I've run out of it now. But it really, really gets the brake dust out off them quite well, all right, as long as you wash it off, and, you know, with, with a cloth and that straight away. But when you squirt the wheels gets on the discs and it makes them go so rusty and it's it's all over the springs right and it it's it you know it's turned them little little spots of rust everywhere and that's some brand new springs it's done it the other side as well so i'm so I, i'm so suppose i'm pretty glad i've run out now i will get some more in but uh you know i won't use it as much uh, there, right. That's it. This side's done. I can listen. That's it. You'll come out of there now. Best tool I ever bought. It has saved such a lot of hassle. 
so I can put this one back together, no problem. It's all right, that's wet because I WD, I always spray WD on them first, just to free them up. Um, I've checked the pads, they're, they're still, there's loads of meat on there. I only did it last year, the pads, and I didn't do that much mileage this, uh, over last year. I can't remember what I did do, but it wanted an awful lot. Right, well I did the video on uh, uh, how to bleed the system. So I don't need to do that now because I haven't broke a line or nothing, so... Right, there. wheels back on, both sides. That's uh, all I'm going to really do to her today. I've got those brakes. Uh, stop them from binding. <coughs> what happens to a transit with uh, disc brakes on the back if they ain't used? Oh, I think it's the same with Sprinter. If they ain't used, they do tend to seize up. You know, because they're just not moving. They sit still for such a long time in one position. So, no, no, I think that Magna is uh, the one, the culprit, that makes them seize. So, got the uh, compressor out. So I'll go around and do everybody's tires, being as I'm here. Right, I've got the uh, front passenger side up now. And they're all working right. I've checked the play in all the joints. And, uh, yeah, I've been down underneath there and checked those. Same with this one, this, this one's nice and free as well. You'll never get them to spin nicely with disc brakes, but anyway, I've checked all the joints. Um, the tie rods, these are renowned for tie rods as well. So, I know for the last MOT I had to have two. Well, I only had to have one, but I had two. I did them in a pair. And then if they go, they usually go at the same time. So I'm just going to clean the wheel now. Get that over and done with. All right, one thing I haven't shown you yet is that I made a, another sh stack of shelves to go there. Only three shelves, but it was able to get my uh, cleaning stuff, my tent pegs and what have you, my hammer, a lump hammer for driving the tent pegs in. Um, so it, it freed up that shelf so I can uh, put two and find someone else to stick in there. We still haven't tied it up. Uh, that's all racked out in there now, so that's all the thing. I, I fetched out my magnets because I got some of these big, uh, big magnets. Um, I don't know what I want them for. I suppose it's to hold the tarp up or something. Stick it to the side of the van and it'll uh, do for holding the tarp up or something. Um, going through the boxes, I found another two of my strobe lights. These are bloody 40 quid each. Each. They are good. They about lasted anything else I've had on here. Um, right. So that's all done now. That was just a, a little fill-in video. Oh, looking good. Must pin that back up. That's where they normally go, is up there. Both these are okay because they were both new last MOT and the shocks were never ever had that on yet I always put a hundred PSI in that and then I got a lead that I connect onto the valve and take straight to either tyre if I need to blow my tyres up yeah I'm happy with that under there let's see what they think with my uh, fabric patcher, leave it loose, don't connect it to anything, just connect the pipes, air filters in the chassis, put a, a piece of uh, steel one going through just in case there's heat transfer, yeah happy with that. <laughs> 